Yo, subscribe to Phenoboxing right now or else. Ba ba ba. <laughs>
and you know, of course, my children and my wife, but it's my pigeon and my clothes. You know, my pigeon and my clothes and my joint. Ain't that something? My joint. Yeah, absolutely. Coming down. Yeah. I, well, listen, I can't stop smoking. I, I was, I smoked during fights. I, I used to have to smoke. I'm sorry. I'm a smoker. I smoke every day. I never stop smoking. Absolutely, yes. Um, it's just who I am. It has no effect on me from a negative standpoint. It's just what I do and who I am and how I'm going to die. There's no explanation. There's no beginning. There's no end. No, it just it, it, it's just numb to me. It doesn't numb the pain. But that's what it's all about. I've done everything for myself. So, so what happens if I die? No, really, what happens? I may begin to live when I die. No one knows what dying's like. It has to be beautiful. Dying can't be bad because living is great. So dying has to be something special. Wow, I never never asked me that. The thought of failure never thought, never creeped in my mind. I never is that failure? I don't know. I don't fuck. I don't damn. That was a hell of a question. No, in a way of um, the um, I, I I just how how do I answer that question? I never think of my I always God forgive me God I always think of myself in, as grandeur. I always think of myself as um. A roaring gladiator like Alexander the Great. I feel like I'm a ruler when I'm in my mind thinking about accomplishing something. I think possible, nothing's impossible to somebody who tries. So I never think about failure in that perspective. I think about failing, but not in that perspective. No, I need the pressure. Without the pressure, there's no me. Without the pressure, I don't have the guts to to say, hey, I'm going to fight this guy. I have to have the pressure. Anything that I'm afraid to do, I do it. If when I was young, when I was afraid to ask out a beautiful girl or a girl, whoever, I would do it. Even if she was saying no, I would just do it just because I was afraid to do it. And um, that's just how I live my life. I just, um, I live to be humbled. I don't think succeed from a material standpoint is an inside job. It's just an inside job. The more you're comfortable with you, the more you be comfortable with death. And the more comfortable you are with death, the more at peace you are with yourself. I didn't have any memories. I just knew I belonged here. This is where I belong. I never had once, even when I first, my first day sparring, and I got my rib crack, and a guy was just, he was just smashing my jaw. I never once said, what the hell am I doing here? Am I crazy? I just said, wow, I'm in the right place. You know, I said, I'm in the right place. Excuse me, will you say that again? I don't think, uh, I don't know. I just, um, I was just happy to be in there. I was just happy to be in there. I never think of myself as old. I think of myself as energy. I never say some 54 year old guy, some 54 year old guy is going to come to the ring. I always say some energy is coming to the ring. I never think of my age. Because listen, before Julius Caesar, he told us that 365 days is a year. So we don't really know how old we are. So, the energy makes us as old as we want to be. Without being um, those, what's what's that 
thing again when you're an old guy and you, you drive a little young guy sports car. What's that mean? My wife always says I'm that way. Midlife crisis, yeah. I don't think it's a midlife crisis with me. I just think it's my ego, and my ego tells me to do things that I'm afraid to do. Just get my ass kicked. My nose hurt right now, yeah. Very happy I did this. I will do it again. Well, um, listen, whatever I want to see come out of it, what I anticipate seeing is really almost there. We're going to take this place. The sky's the limit with this place. We have so many great legends that are so, um, it's, it's just an array of them that's so interested in jumping on board and being involved with this program. Listen, I had eight, I had what fifteen fights in one year. So let's just let's just try to work on closer to that. Let's, it has to be competitive, where the guy where it's constant, no one can get out of shape because everybody's fighting. You know, it'll be consistent. I would like to have um once every two months. My personal opinion, I would like to have one fight every two months. The first time I ever did mint, when y'all saw that, and I got these two billion impressions, after that I was in the bed for a couple of days. I couldn't get up. I had um, sciatica. Can you believe that combination gave me sciatica? Excuse me? Um, I'm going to work out. It become my lifestyle now. I'm never going to be that guy, you know, I don't know, fat Mike again and stuff, cokehead Mike. I ain't going to be that guy no more. Well, they probably could take me now, but can they take me 10 fights later after I have 10 fights? Or 10 exhibitions, please forgive me. And then maybe after that, maybe we can exhibition. The people who are saying what you're saying, maybe we can have exhibition probably after 10 more of these that I, I have. No, I, I wanted the exhibition narrative because from that perspective, I could work my charity better than being in professional fights and I'm fighting for my life and I want the belt and this and that and there's pressure on me. There's no pressure. My only pressure is that I won't have enough um, product to help the people who need to be helped in this particular situation, that is. Just grassroots charities, friends of mine um, that's holding down the community, involved with stopping the killing and stopping the crime. And those are the guys that I'm involved with that want to help the youth, the next generation. We don't want to lose the next generation with drugs and pandemics and everything. We have pride in our, com our community, which is Brownsville, Brooklyn, and just Brooklyn in general, you know, and, um, and just anybody. We have, we have, um, we have charities um, in Newport Beach. It's just, um, we're doing a lot. We're doing a lot with little stuff. And so me doing these exhibitions and receiving things, that helps. That really helps. I didn't wake up. I didn't sleep last night. No. No sleep. I'm, I'm just one of those scary guys. I don't sleep when I'm involved with the comp competitive stuff. The old Mike, the old Mike Tyson no longer exists. I, no, I just, um, this was a new occasion for me. I was bit nervous, but I just looked at the situation. Hey, this is a better cause than me. Why am I nervous? This is going to be good. You know? I didn't expect to do anything. I just expect to go to eight rounds and try to and entertain the crowd 
and um, be able to do what I want to do in these um, grassroots situations. And that was beautiful. And besides that, me and Roy, we broke records to our championship fights tonight. You know? Everybody's watching. And um, I'm really grateful to that. I'm really grateful for that. Really, I am. I'm here for a purpose. I'm not here for my ego. My ego is taking the money and um, buying some planes and some nice houses and packing up a bunch of chill chicks and have some orgies and stuff. This is not who that is right now. That guy was just somebody that had to be eventually, he was a platform to become me. Informing them that they deserve this opportunity that they have and to make the best of it. They said, listen, um, Luca, what's his name, Paul? Jake Paul got four million um, subscribers that follow him. Can you imagine that? I didn't know he existed until my, excuse me? <laughs> you heard that? He got 25 million. I didn't know he existed until my son wanted to fight him one day. I said, who are you going to fight? This guy? Come on. And then he was a big star. Everybody knows who he is. And I'm so happy that he he um, he joined on the bandwagon with me and Roy. Well, listen. My ego says so many things. But my reality is they help boxing so much. Boxing owe these guys some kind of they owe these YouTube boxers some kind of, you know, respect. They should give them some belts because these guys make boxing a lie. Boxing was pretty much a dying sport. UFC was kicking our butt. And now we got these YouTube boxers. Boxing has been 25 million views. Boxing's going back. Thanks to the YouTube boxers. I believe the more anyone box, the bigger it is for the sport. So boxing took a couple of beatings since the UFC's been around. Boxing never have too many belts because every time there's a championship fight, that's more money for the fighter. So there's never enough belts, you know? So just say there's one champion. He got 10... 10 guys. How long do you think he's going to go through these 10 guys? Plus, they got to fight each other and take each other out. So, listen, he's really no fights. So, it's good to have three champions, and every time there's a fight, the commission, everybody can get paid their money, their percentage, or whatever they, they charge. And um, it's beautiful. Everybody makes money. That's what this business is about, money. It's not about ego. Hey, I don't like him and who he was, so I'm not going to fight him. If, he, if he's your friend, your fight, you make each other money. How do you guys be friends and you're both fighters and one guy's the big star, you, you, you're, hardly star you're hardly eating and he say he's your friend. That's what fighters did in the old time. They fight each other and give, make each other money and help each other. That's what it should be like now. I shouldn't say I'm not going to fight him because I don't like his promoter. hey, listen, I'm an old-ass guy when it comes to that stuff. I don't have no energy for that no more. I'm just with the wife and kids. And that is beautiful. Jake Paul, him and his brother, man, they're a god gift to YouTube boxers. YouTube, I mean, boxing should just give them a belt. You know, because these guys brought boxing back to life. And I know it's hard to believe, but these guys brought it back. 25 million views to see this guy with some gloves on to fight any that. He fought Nate Robinson tonight, right? Not, oh, oh, God. I like Nate, too. I didn't like to see the knockout.
no way, man. We're going to do whatever somebody, any legend wants to do. Jerry Rice, um, any any um, McEnroe and his brother, they still feel they can play. Anybody that, that anyone said, hey, you retired, you're no good no more, but you still got it, you're still beautiful. Jerry Rice got it. I got it. You know what I mean? Guys like Tom Brady, they could play forever. You know, that's just the way it is. You know what I mean? People still want to, even if we're not as fast as we used to be, because this is how this, this is how Legends Only League got into existence. I'm watching Jerry Rice. I don't know what it is, beyond the glory, whatever it is. And this guy, he runs a five, four, something to that, that extent. I don't know the football. So he's like a few seconds off that, so he can't play no more. Wow, can you believe this man? He's a few he's a few seconds off his world best record. So that means you're no good. You can't play no more. But there's guys that want to see him run more than they want to see the guy that plays his position now on a team he lost, he 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 didn't make. So what's that mean? We can't watch Jerry no more? Really, we can't watch Jerry no more just because he's a few seconds slower. So I think Jerry Rice. He could find a bunch of friends that would like him in shape and they stayed in shape and they still have their speed. And they could they could have opened up an organization, a commission. And so and they could do it in tennis. And, but I guess race car, you, you could do that at any age. But still, you know, there'd be other sports. Well, this is all I have to say about that, brother, you know? You saw it tonight? No boxer promoter was involved, you know? And that's why if we had tennis and people came to see the Legends Only Tennis, your guys, we have different rules. You could break your tennis rep, you could talk crap to the other guy. This is called freestyle. And, um, and I think that is good because some of the restrictions um, really um, suffocate the athletes. And they can't express their feelings, so they can't play at the highest potential that they normally play because of the restrictions of the rules. I can't tell you who Mike Tyson is because I'm only 54 years old. And if I'm 54 years old and I can tell you everything about me and I know who I am, I'm very, um, I'm very limited in my thinking. So I don't know really that much. I just, um, I just want to be who I am. I like who I am. I never liked who I was before. I like who I am now. I don't know. Maybe a band needs to talk to me because every time my my business associates talk to his business associates, it doesn't turn out well, you know. So I don't know if these guys really. If you could see what we made tonight, if these guys were really cared about the welfare of Evander, they would have had this fight with Evander. Or maybe we could do another, but he's what whoever he's with is handling it totally wrong. Excuse me? I know nothing about the gross. I don't, that's not my department. That's never been my department. I just know about um, the people and the crowds and the viewers and all that stuff. Um, I don't know. You, you'll find that out before me, I'm sure. It's really my pleasure. Thank you.